Hello everyone, now let us discuss about pharmacology of 5-HT antagonists. Coming to the classification, the 5-HT antagonists are categorized as non-selective antagonists, 5-HT2 antagonists and 5-HT3 antagonists. Examples of 5-H non-selective antagonists are methyl subjite, ergotamine and euhembin. Coming to 5-HT2 antagonists, the drugs are ketacerin, ritanserin, clozapine, Resperidone and Ciproheptidine, which is a selective 5-HT2 antagonist. Coming to 5-HT3 antagonist, they are Ondansetron, Ganesetron, Palenocetron, Ramosetron and Tropicetron. They are mainly used as antiemetic drugs. We will discuss about them in detail when we talk about antiemetics. So, as of now, we will just briefly discuss about Ondansetron. Now coming to the first drug, ciproheptidine. It is primarily blocks 5-HT2A receptors. It primarily blocks 5-HT2A receptors and has additional H1 antihistaminic, anticholinergic and sedative properties. It increases the appetite. This is mainly contributed by H1 antihistaminic action and the action on growth hormone. And an off-label use of this drug, ciproheptidine, in underweight children is inappropriate because it causes CNS depressant action. Because of it, CNS depressant action can affect learning. So, it should not be used in children. Coming to the uses, the anti-5-HT activity has been utilized in controlling intestinal man manifestations of carcinoid and post-gastrectomy dumping syndromes. Ciproheptidine is used to control intestinal manifestations of carcinoid and post-gastectomy dumping syndrome and to antagonize the priapism or orgasmic delay caused by floxetine and tradosome. Coming to the adverse effects, they are drowsiness, dry mouth, confusion, ataxia and weight gain. The next drug is methyl subject. It is chemically related to ergot alkaloids. It is a potent 5-HT2A slash 2C antagonist with some tissue specific agonistic actions as well. It antagonizes actions of 5-HT on vascular and visceral smooth muscles. Uses are previously it was used to treat migraine prophylactically and for the treatment of carcinoid and post gastrectomy dumping syndrome. But it is now disused because it causes pulmonary, abdominal and endocardial fibrosis. Because it is causing abdominal, pulmonary and endocardial fibrosis, methyl surgate is not used for migraine prophylaxis and to treat carcinoid and post-gastrectomy dumping syndromes. The next drug is ketanserin. It is a selective 5-HT2 antagonist. To be more specific, T2A and 5-HT induced vasoconstriction, platelet aggregation and contraction of airway smooth muscle are antagonized by ketanserin. It has a significant alpha-1 adrenergic blocking property and was introduced as antihypertensive but did not gain popularity. It also has weak H1 and dopaminergic blocking activities. The next drug is ritanserin. It is relatively more selective 5-HT2A antagonist. The next drug is clozapine. It is a typical antipsychotic which has weak dopaminergic antagonist. This is 5-HT2A slash 2C antagonist. Clozapine is a 5-HT2A slash 2C antagonist. And this may also exert inverse agonist activity at 5-HT2A slash 2C cerebral receptors which may account for its efficacy in the resistant cases of schizophrenia. The next drug is Resperidone. This atypical antipsychotic is a combined D2 plus 5-HT2A antagonist. Resperidone is a D2 plus 5-H2A antagonist. Its actions are similar to that of clozapine. But additionally, it produces extra pyramidal side effects. The next drugs are olanzapine and quetiapine. They are also combined 5-HT and DA antagonists, dopaminic antagonists, 
but they interfere with other neurotransmitter receptors as well. Now finally coming to 5-HT3 antagonist on down syndrome. It is a prototypical selective 5-HT3 antagonist that has shown remarkable efficacy in controlling the nausea and vomiting following administration of highly emetic anti-cancer and radiotherapy drugs, radiation therapy. It is highly effective in the treatment of emesis caused by anti-cancer and radiation therapy. By this, we complete the 5-HT antagonists. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on pharmacology and other related pharmaceutical sciences.